Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? This is Tony Vinchell with the Stronger You Fitness ASU Fit and the Becoming a Stronger You Movement. This is my first time going live on this account, I think. Um, I normally have been going live on my personal Facebook account. So I wanted to try going live on this account just to see who would jump on. Um, I sent out a message and everything, so I'm not, I'm not really sure if this page is going to be active, more active with my live posts. Um, or if I should just continue to do the live post on my personal page. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and start talking and see, you know, who hops on and who doesn't. Whatever. It's all good. Um, okay, so title of this video, and I know that it has been a while. I was supposed to be doing 67 straight days of content. But, uh, you know, shit happens and, and life happens and all that kind of stuff. So this is going to be number 14. And I will go ahead and post it and I'll, I'll just continue from this point on 14 all, all up into um, number 67. So the title of this, this video is What is Realistic Weight Loss? And um, the reason why I'm doing this video is because it was a question that was um, asked to me by a young lady who is on my personal page. I believe her name is Mahogany, if I'm not mistaken. And she wanted to know, you know, what, what is realistic weight loss? Um, you know, what if you're obese? And I know there's a couple of people who were asking me, you know, if, I'm, if I've already lost weight or if I'm already small or, you know, whatever the situation may be, what should I be looking at in terms of weight loss? Um, it's, it's extremely important that you understand that what I'm about to talk about are some of the averages, which means that there are some highs and there are some lows um, calculated in those averages and that everybody is different. Um, every person's body is different and every person is different. Um, so it's extremely important that you understand uh, that you understand that. So there was a, a study and I don't have my notes here in front of me, but I actually have it. Um, if you want to, if you want to actually read the story, the study, I can post it in the comment section. Just go ahead and let me know. Um, that was done on a population of people, and they took people from 39 states here in the U.S. along with D.C. and uh, they worked with populations of people who were 18 and older um, in different uh, different different demographic groups. And basically, there were a whole bunch of questions that they were trying to ask in the study. But one of the questions that they were asking was, um, what was the weight, the, the rate of weight loss amongst these different groups? And what they found was amongst men, amongst men, the average weight loss was about 1.4 pounds per week amongst men. And amongst women, the average amount of weight loss was 1.1 pound per week. However, the interesting thing that they noted in the study was that these averages are um, a lot more indicative of the people who were really, really successful with their programs um, and not so much so with, yes, talk to you later, okay. Um, and not so much so with the people who weren't really as 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 successful, right? So again, it's important to understand that when you're when we're pumping out these numbers, 1.4 pounds a week for men, 1.4 pounds per week for women, we're talking about people who are you know average height, average size, um, s sort of a you know close to an optimal working metabolism. Now. If you are um, oh, really overweight or obese and you don't really have any metabolic issues or just very few metabolic issues, what tends to happen at the beginning of your weight loss program is you will experience weight loss that is a lot more than 1.1 um, pound. 1.1 pounds per week. You may start off dropping five pounds a week. You may start off dropping seven pounds a week, 10 pounds a week. The reason for that is because when you are obese, it takes a lot more energy to perform those movements. Um, so it takes a lot more energy to get started. It takes a lot more energy to perform those movements. And it also takes a, more, a lot more energy um, for you to recover after the workout. So Ultimately, your heart rate is staying higher longer, and basically what that means is because it takes more energy, you are using more energy, and so you're going to be burning more calories. What happens, though, is our bodies are super duper smart, right? So as you start to lose weight, 
um, and as you start to lose a lot of weight or if you have already lost a weight a lot of weight or if you are more conditioned the more conditioned you become the less energy it takes for you to be able to do those same movements that were really really hard for you to do when you started your program and so now what happens is you start not to lose as much weight per week as you were when you first started your program and the interesting thing with that is that when you get smaller um, as you start to decrease more and more and more in size sometimes depending on your metabolism and your body type um, you may have to um, you may have to start getting more creative with your weight loss so then that's when you know people start experimenting with things like um, like uh, carb cycling, um, doing the ketogenic diet, doing the low fat diet. So you kind of have to, uh, what's up to my one viewer? I can't see who you are. Um, for whatever reason, I can't see you, but hey. Uh, so yeah, you have to start becoming more creative with your, with your methods, for, methods for weight loss. The other thing that's, that, that's important for me to note is it is extremely important that when you start off on your weight loss program, even if you are obese, that you are starting your weight loss program with the maximum amount of calories that are allowed for your goals and your body type. And the reason for that is as you start to lose weight, again, as you get smaller, it becomes a little bit harder to lose that weight. and when you plateau or if you do plateau if you've already started out at a very 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 low caloric intake you don't really have anywhere to go um, so if you've already started at 1200 what are you gonna do go down to a thousand and then when you get to a thousand what are you gonna do go down to 950 900 875 now you're putting yourself in a position where you are really going to wreck your metabolism and it's important to understand that our bodies have memory just like we have muscle memory we have a metabolic memory your body has a journal of every diet that you have ever gone through in your entire life and it remembers that and so if you were on one of those diets where it was super duper low calorie and you were working out for two three hours a day seven days a week your body remembers that and if it caused damage to you your body doesn't want to go through that anymore so if you are on a weight loss program and you're already starting off with 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 a really really low caloric intake and you go lower and lower and lower and lower and lower and you, you plateau there's nowhere else for you to go and you cause this metabolic damage so now what has to happen is one of the first steps to get you where you need to be is now you have to increase your caloric intake now you have to start taking in a lot of calories and when somebody wants to lose weight that is not something that people want to hear um, and even for some people the damage is so bad that not only do you have to increase the number of calories that they're eating but sometimes you have to significantly decrease the amount of, of physical activity or the amount of resistance training training that they're doing and then sometimes you have to take it all away and just allow the body to rest and recover and again for somebody who is trying to lose weight that's not really something that you want to hear um, because what happens in that situation is if we have to increase your calories because you're so you're so metabolically damaged you may gain more weight before you can even start losing weight so rather than put yourself in that position it's extremely important that you are working with the maximum amount of calories that are going to be allowed for your situation and then as you start to measure yourself um, if you plateau or you're not seeing results and again when I say measure yourself and I say plateau really and truly you are not in a plateau unless you have been in that space for three to four weeks if you haven't seen any change in any results in three to four weeks then you were at a plateau but if you go one week or two weeks and you don't you don't lose anything I mean that may just be your body adjusting and that's the truth a lot of people don't want to hear that because we live in a microwave society and you want to lose weight now you know I want my weight to come off now it's got to come off now it's got to come off now but the fact of the matter is you've got to give your body time to adjust so 
if you are taking the maximum amount, uh, number of calories that are allowed for your goals and your body type and your body size, and you go about three or four weeks and you start to plateau, now you have a lot of room to work with in terms of decreasing your calories, right? So that's just a piece of advice that... Um, that I wanted to throw out, throw out there and I wanted to give everybody. So again, um, you know, and oh, oh, so another piece, another piece that I need to give you is, you know, in that study, again, average, average height, average weight, um, well, not really average weight. They were a little bit overweight, um, but none of them in the study were like really obese. Um, again, 1.4 pounds a week for men, 1.1 pounds a week for women. But it's important to note that now, you know, the studies are showing like between 2014 all the way up until 2016, the average weight loss is now looking like more around like 0.5 of a pound a week for women, 0.5 to one pound a week for women. And again, that has a lot to do with the quality of food. It has a lot to do with the quality of the air that we breathe, we breathe and, and the stress from work and a lot of other factors that affect our metabolisms. But it's important to understand that. Um, weight loss is a journey. And if you take it as a sprint, you know, and, and, and people say this all the time, they think that it's a cliche, but it's, it's true. It's true. Sometimes the quicker you get it off, the quicker it will come back. And if you take these ridiculous measures, dropping your calories all the way down to 800 a day, you know, 500 a day with some programs, I have seen some programs where the calorie intake is only 500 calories a day, um, you, you, you will lose the weight, but it'll come back. And when the weight comes back, it will come with friends. Um, the other thing that you risk or the other issue that you risk having is that when you lose the weight because your caloric intake is so low that you cannot sustain a regular resistance training program. Now you have to worry about all of this extra skin um, and, you know, just your body just not being tight and shapely the way that you would like for it to be. So... That's the, that's the advice that I have to give you. It is weight loss is a journey. It is something that you have to take your time with. And you have to look at this thing in the long term. You have to start thinking about five, six, you know, 10, 20 years from now. How do you want your metabolism to be? What do you want your life to be, be like? What do you want your health to be like? And you should never put yourself in a position where you are sacrificing your health for your aesthetic goals because you may not pay for it now, um, but the body always remembers. And if you don't pay now, you will pay eventually. So hopefully this helped. Um, I will probably download this video and maybe throw it up on my YouTube channel as well for those who can consume my content there. I know I have um, a bunch of people that follow it there and I, I've got my my uh, my blog as well. So um, I'll see about downloading and, 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 and shooting that stuff up there as well. I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. You can Twitter me or tweet me <laughs> at... Uh, Stronger you, that's A stronger, the letter U. Um, you can Snapchat me at ASU Fit. Snapchat is, a, is actually pretty cool. I'm, I'm getting a lot more comfortable using it. So, um, yeah, it's actually pretty cool. Snapchat me at ASU Fit, or you can leave some comments down here at the bottom of this video. All right, so I am out of here, and I hope this was helpful. Until I talk to you all again, stay strong, stay beautiful, and always, always, always work towards becoming a stronger you. Peace out. <laughs>